Did you get a chance to look at it as a question? If not, let's read it up together. The question is asking, given a binary search tree, okay, so I have a big assumption here, which is all of you already know what the binary search tree is. This, this is supposed to be covered in the video lectures that we released a week ago, almost a week. And you are supposed to watch the video and work on your last lab. Questions on this? So let me know if you don't have a clue what the binary search tree is, okay? Otherwise, I'll just assume that everyone knows what this is. Even a BSD with non-negative values, note that non-negative values, so everything is positive. Find the minimum absolute difference between values of two nodes. So the two nodes here, they are arbitrary. They can be anywhere. But, okay, yeah, there's also minimum absolute difference. I believe you all got a sense of what this is, minimum absolute difference, and how to calculate this. So the minimum absolute difference is supposed to be a positive integer or zero. It cannot be negative. If you have A as a value and a B as a value, you are supposed to subtract the one from another, then get as a positive value. Okay, minimum absolute difference. There's an example that's given. One, three, two output is one because the minimum absolute difference happens between three and two. If you subtract a two and a three, get the absolute value, then that's one. Okay. Or if you do that other way around, it's the same. Okay. Any clarifications or any confusions about what is the question is asking? Are you good on this? Okay. If you say that you have a good understanding of the question, let me ask you something. Where does the minimum absolute difference happen? Or in other words, where is the minimum absolute difference likely to happen? Okay, some of you provided a hypothesis, the value closest to one another, the value closest to one another. So by saying values, of course, the values that are closest to one another, this is not really a hypothesis, this is a fact. So if you cast that to the tree structure, if you look at a tree, instead of values, of course, there are values in the tree. Where do you think the minimum absolute difference is likely to happen in terms of the positions of two nodes? Where would the two nodes are likely to be? Or would the two nodes be that you know, the minimum absolute difference in a BST. Do you think the hypothesis that the nodes that are closest to each other still hold true or not? What am I asking is this, if you have difficulty understanding, let me give you an example. This could be what? 42, maybe what? 46, maybe let's make this 57. Then 52. 
60. Okay. This is an arbitrary example that that we can look at and learn what we are trying to generalize. This it will lead to the solution. See, where would the two nodes be that happen to give you the minimum absolute difference? Is there a pattern that we can use or not? Can we see that? Can we still say that the minimum absolute difference is likely to be between the two nodes that are neighboring each other? Can we say that? What is the minimum absolute difference if you look at this tree? That's one. One between which two nodes? If you see, that's one. Okay, between these two nodes. You can we conclude based on this example that the minimum absolute difference will happen in a scenario like this, where you have two nodes neighboring each other, or in other words, the minimum absolute difference is always likely to happen between the two nodes neighboring each other. Can we say that? No, why? Yeah, what if we swap this value from 46 to 47 and swap this value from 52 to 51. In the end, where does the minimum absolute difference happen? It's gonna be between 50 and 51, right? So why am I asking you this? So go through an example and see if you have a pattern. And here, our conclusion is, is what? The hypothesis that the minimum absolute difference that happens between two nodes that are neighboring each other is false. In other words, what do you need to do? If you are going to look for the minimum absolute difference in our arbitrary tree. The indication is that you need to traverse everything because you don't really know where would that be. It's not necessarily between the two nodes are neighboring each other, like this 50, it's not neighboring 51, okay? So, but there's one thing that we know, which is the way that you calculate a minimum absolute difference is to subtract one value from another, right? So let's see, this is A, right? If you, if you fix A to 50, you need to traverse everything in this whole tree to see if that happens to be B, that yield you the minimum absolute difference, okay? You need every node to be B, then try to do the calculation. Does this make sense? This is where you try to go through an example and figure out where the minimum absolute difference is likely to happen. And the conclusion is that it happens everywhere. So you really need to traverse everything. But given the way that how you calculate minimum absolute difference, subtract A from B, you can fix your value A to a node. Then let B be every other node. Then calculate for one run. Then next time, Fix your A to 50, 45. Then let B be everything else. You don't have, the B doesn't have to go to somewhere like what you, it doesn't have to be 50 anymore because you already finished your calculation between 50 and 54. But in other words, once you fix A to a node, it literally need to be, to be everything else that goes below it, okay? Does this make sense?
I want to ask, we can skip over the numbers that are to left and to right. I'm not sure what you were talking about. I can't, can't read this. Are to left uh, and to right. I'll, I'll just say it. Um, so like the 42 and the 60 in this example, if they're smaller than the number that was already smaller than the top, um, so can we like count that off then? Because like are there's you, no way. So here, let me to generalize a pattern? Yeah. I'm seeing if, if that was a way. Um, so like it's this possible you need here. more than one example to generalize a pattern. OK. Oh, I, yeah, I see where I made a mistake. All right, thank you. Yep. So the reason why we go, this, so go through this example is to figure out whether there's a pattern. There's not not a pattern. You can go through a few more. There's not really a pattern. You need your you need to fix one value as A in this formula. Then try everything as B. That's what you call as one round of the calculation. And you need this to happen everywhere else because this A also needs to cover everything. The only thing that you don't want is you don't want to repeat yourself to do the same calculation. So once this is A, then B needs to be everything else, right? And then the next time you change your fixture from 50 to 45, make 45 as A, then in this case, you no longer need your B to be 50 because you already finished that calculation, okay? Yeah, but you do need B to be everywhere else, other than the part where you already traversed. OK? So how do we do this then? We need to literally traverse everything of a, a given BSD. What did you learn from the traversal of a BSD? What can you do about it? How many approaches are there for you to traverse a given BSD? In order, pre order, and post order? Yep, there are three different ways. So, which way do you want to apply here? And the first side doesn't make a difference. So let's just go with arbitrarily in order. If we can finish this task, we can fix A to a node. Then let B be everything else. Then what do we do? If you are the one to write the code. OK. Before we move on to write some code, to review this, we are provided a node class with integer key left to right and constructor. That's it. There's no parent, which is something that's different from you got in your lab. Okay. And, oh, I'm sorry. There is also a class being provided, a method named get a minimum difference that accepts a root or a node as the only parameter and returns an integer. Okay, this is what you are given. So let's move that here. I'm just gonna call it get min diff. It accepts a node. Okay. Are we allowed to make, make helper methods? Of course, yeah, you're supposed to make helper methods if this doesn't meet your needs. I, like in this case, I don't think this really meets what I need to use. I, I don't even know what to put here even. And this name of the root is really odd for me. So let me try to make, uh, make something new. 
make a different method down here. What this is supposed to return? See, Let's make this ink first. Not sure. In order. Traversal. Okay. And we know that certainly it has to take a node. It has to take a node as a parameter. What else does it need? I don't know. Let's go with this for now. So our conclusion is that once you got a node, you're gonna based on the the ways that you calculate the minimum absolute difference, make this as A, let everything be B. How do we do this if you are going to apply in order traversal? We know that in order traversal, the most important thing happens in the middle somewhere. So then let's call this in order traversal again. On um, its node dot left. Not sure if, if I'm even doing the right thing yet because this is supposed to return an integer. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to put the structure here. I also know that possibly down here, I need another. So to go to the note about to write. Okay, then this is where the magic happens. This is where we are supposed to deal with fix note to A, then let B be everything. So if we are going to fix note to A, let B be everything. It seems a little bit odd because this is what? This is a recursion, right? This is a recursion. And in order traversal is not a generic, is not a generic recursion. If you go through the slides that I put online for recursion, there are different types, subtypes of recursion. For generic type of recursion, then you have your parameters, parameters that representing a problem. Then you have different cases, the trivial case and the recursive case. A different type of recursion that's in between backtracking and generic recursion, you have parameters standing for something else. What do they stand for in the, this case? Like for in other traversal, this parameter it doesn't stand for a problem. It stands for a scenario, a dynamically changing scenario. So this fits naturally if you want this node to be B because it keeps changing as it goes down the way on left and the right. So we can think it's natural that we think A as a fixture is somewhere else, is somewhere else. Let's see, let's make this as parent. We know that we have to fix A to someone. We just don't know where yet. The reason we want this node to be B instead of A is because the natural of the other traversal as a recursive, recursive algorithm, the parameter stands for a dynamically changing scenario. It can be this, and it can be this as well. So let's see, we want A to be a parent. It's a node that we have no idea where it's gonna be yet, but we know that the parent can be, can be something that's on top. Seven, fifty-two, fifty-six, forty. Let's see, forty-seven. Okay. So let's see. This is what we want to happen. We want A to be here. Then we use in order traversal to cover every other nodes. To cover every other nodes. Okay. So this is what you can think as a B. Then what do we do here? Let's just pretend that we already have the parent. 
then what you can do is to check if you can find the, the mass function mass abs i'm just going to write it in this way if parent dot note minus i'm sorry it should be parent dot value or key to speak to what we are provided by the class. This is an integer. Note dot key. This is how you calculate the minimum absolute difference. The way that I write it is trying to make things as simple as possible. This should be mass dot abs instead of these two bars. It's smaller. If this is smaller than what? The current minimum absolute difference that you are tracking. Just call it MD. If this is the case, then you want to you want to reassign this value to MD. Okay? If this happens, you want to update your minimum absolute difference. Then what else do we need to do? And possibly that's the only thing that we, we care about. So in other words, this does this still return integer? Does that make sense? If we use an extra variable MD to keep track of the minimum absolute difference, then Letting this method to return an integer no longer makes sense. You change this to void. We do also need something else, which is MD being defined outside as a minimum absolute difference. You're gonna let that start as an integer dot maximum. Okay. There's one more thing that we didn't solve yet, which is where does this parent come from? Where does this come from? That includes how I do this. I add as a definition of the parent. I'm gonna, of course, define the parent as an external variable, for sure. But can I do this? Can I, after the if statement, I'm assign, I'm gonna assign parent to this node. And inside of this if statement, I'm gonna check whether parent is equal to null. I need to make sure that doesn't, it's not equal to null. Then I'm gonna check this whether this is smaller than the other wall. Would this work? Why am I doing this here? What does that mean? Are you still following me or you have some gaps needs further clarification or explanation? We're still sticking to the same idea. We're gonna let A be a node that's fixed somewhere. Then use in order traversal to find every B and perform the same calculation. Is MD a global variable? Yes, it has to be one, right? Because we, once we got here, we find that we don't have a variable to keep track of the minimum absolute difference. So it got to be a global variable. Same as a parent. This is the only way that you can fix the parent to a node. 
Any difficulties to understand what I'm doing here? There are still questions that you didn't answer me yet, which is, who does this work? If I add another line, try to assign note to the parent. Does this conflict with what, what we are doing? This line, it will set your parent to be a note. I haven't fully finished this yet. So you are supposed to call in other traversal here. And give it a parameter. The parameter should stand, start with the root. Then there should be another line that returns the MD in the end. So it returns an integer. When this method is being called, with the parameter as a root, what would happen? You're gonna set a root as the parent once it got here. Then it's not gonna change, it's not gonna change for this in order traversal and this in order traversal. So the parent will always be the node. Then you would be able to find every B and use this parent to subtract their value. Any questions or confusions or you're totally lost? Silence. Okay, let me start by asking you different questions. Did you ever get a chance to learn that there are different types of recursions when took 145 or different plus? One forty five. Did you take one forty five with me? What are the different types? What are the different types of recursion? If you take 145 with others, it's likely that they are using my slides. So there's a generic recursion. The most important thing is for you to understand that the parameters in recursion, they can stand for different things. Generic recursion, the parameters, they do stand for a problem. But for backtracking, backtracking or something that sits in between a generic recursion and a backtracking, the parameters they don't stand for a problem. They stand for a scenario. You get a chance to learn this? Well, whether it's better for memory usage or not, that's not really your concern. The most important cons concern you should have is to get a good understanding of the, what parameters stand for. Because most of the people that graduating with a BS in CS, they don't really get recursion by the time they are done, even many years afterwards. Our original plan is to use this node and fix that as A. If you look at the way that how we calculate the minimum absolute difference, that is the reason why we gave up that original plan and to make this node as B that traverses everywhere is because of the nature of this method. In other traversal, that liter literally traverse every node. Okay, and also this node here in the in other traversal algorithm, it really stands for a scenario that's dynamically changing. It fits natural for B instead of A. Any questions? The total silence doesn't really give me any clues on how you understand this. Are we good on this?
This is not an else statement. This is just a one line after the if. If you want to look at the code like this, just one more line after the if statement. This is a code. If you are looking at it, that's the way that you calculate mass.abs. It just takes more space, so I didn't write that down. 